Here we go. Set camera mark. We're running. Good guys, keep the physicality. And action. In recreating Sherlock Holmes, you see that he was even stranger than could be imagined. There's loads to be interpreted from the originals and loads that we've locked in our minds that's wrong. And what we've tried to do is take him back to his origin as essentially a more visceral character, more of an adventurer. This is not your grandfather, Sherlock Holmes. The whole thing is just being reinvented as something much more dynamic. There's the refined quality to it, and at the same time, it's very rough and tumble. It's got that Guy Ritchie feeling to it. It just feels new. It feels fresh. It feels like you're seeing this for the first time. Watson, what have you done? I went to boarding school when I was six, and what they did then was if, the, if you were good, they used to play you Sherlock Holmes stories. They had speakers in each room, and if you were bad, they used to switch off the stories. Cut. Cut there. Sherlock Holmes I fell in love with, uh, as, as I think probably every young boy did, and I knew there was something there and a way to do it that wasn't quite what we'd seen before. Action. The images I saw in my head as I read these books were completely different from anything I'd seen in any of the previous movies. <laughs> Your boys have done a magnificent job obliterating any potential evidence. Yes, but at least they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. The mental image we all have of Sherlock Holmes as a short-haired, clean-shaven, stiffly starched guy with a deerstalker hat and a pipe and all that kind of stuff. What happened to Sherlock Holmes is he became this rather posh, homogenized individual, the quintessential lofty toff. Mud of the coffin. Well, we are in the process of bringing it up now. Yes. At what stage of the process? Contempt. He knew everything, and he always figured it out, and he was a bit snooty about it, but no one seemed to uh, give him too much guff because they needed the information he had. He was one of those guys. And action! But the truth is, the more you look into Conan Doyle's books, you know, it's such a rich character, such a rich world. The books, some of them were very much small deductive pieces, and some of them were big adventures. By going back to the original stories, you see that it isn't a dusty old chestnut. It is fresh. We want to show it in a way that we've never seen before. And in fact, we're being truer to the source material than maybe some of the previous films were able to be. Because we have the technology to build a scope much bigger than any of the previous versions were able to. You want to get a, a staccato, regimented, smash, smack, smack, yeah, his element. I always just describe it as the Guy Ritchie version of a Sherlock Holmes movie because his style of cinema is so fresh and modern and sort of kinetic and fun. You do know what you're drinking is meant for eye surgery. Guy's a perfect director for this reimagination of, of Sherlock Holmes because he's an innovator and he's kind of reinventing himself as well. Early on in his career, I think he really changed filmmaking and inspired a lot of directors since. If you put his natural sort of intelligence into the period setting, it works wonderfully well. What are the walls? Oh, she's covered. Enough, please. Enough. Guy knows exactly how to combine action, the adventure, the scope, the sense of humor, and get great performances out of these actors. Them asking Guy to do it was a stroke of genius. Good. The more like that. He's brilliant at physicalizing drama. Three, two, one, bang! You know, it is very, very action-packed, and he's so incredibly good at that. He always says, we need you to really huff and puff through this one, you know? He always says, huff and puff, huff and puff. I need some huff and puff. <sighs> and then you're off. Okay. And then the camera goes too. Okay, stand by to go again. 
if you release the handbrake and let the whole thing just free fall and have the balls to go with it, you know, great things happen. And Guy's been brave enough and generous enough to let us do that. I told you you'd be coming out of the top window, soldier boy. There isn't any way of coming out of that terrace. Well, technically, that isn't the top window, is it, sailor boy? Anyway! Anywho! <laughs> Boom. No, I don't know. You've got to watch out for the old stuntman struggle. OK. There was a <laughs> bit of danger of that going on. Guy's a real man. He's a martial artist. I'm a martial artist. We meet on that level. We meet as, um, as lovers of film and lovers of kind of almost thumbing our noses at what the status quo is and, and saying we can do something as cool as that. In fact, we think for us, for our, our take on it, our likings, we can beat it. 06, Juliet, take four. No, hard to go. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah, Punch me in the stomach. Yeah. Punch me in the stomach. Go. When this project first came to me, I thought, we should go for, I know they've already done the young Sherlock Holmes, but we were thinking about doing a sort of late 20s version. But once I got to know Robert a bit, um, it seemed conspicuously obvious after a while. And now it's almost ridiculous to think back that it could have been any other actor. So someone will set it. Well, he just from slide the it in. So when, when's the discovery, though? When's the discovery? The discovery, uh, well, let me, let me think here. After the, after the throw-in. He's already knocked you under, then you're there organically. Yes, yeah, over there. I mean, Robert is the perfect Sherlock Holmes, really, isn't he? He's so brilliant, so funny, and so quick-witted, and I, I, he thinks a bit like Sherlock Holmes, I think. Holmes, what are you doing? Nothing. Are you wearing a false nose? No. <laughs> Tell me, that one. Actually, it does have its own charm. It does. He can fizz at a higher level when he's improvising. And it's amazing that in the story, Holmes has that quality that he cannot help seeing clues. There's a lot of elements there that I couldn't help but infuse him with. He's always had a sense of humor. You know, in another life, you'd have made an excellent criminal. Yes, sir, you, sir, an excellent policeman. He's a bit of a weirdo in that he spends most of his time chasing down details that people would go out of their minds if they had to engage. Several sets of initials scored into Born the lid. Excellent. Cut down, cut down, reset. The archetype to me is the person who understands what all you normal people are doing out there, but he's a man on a mission and he represents adventure incarnate. Fister Patella. Summary prognosis conscious in 90 seconds, full faculty recovery, unlikely. Well, it's all in the books, you know. He's a single stick fighter, a master of the strange art of Baritsu, bare knuckle boxer, all that stuff. the first martial artist, really, in Western culture. He's an action hero. I've got to tell you, Robert is a very exceptional human being. In Iron Man, you saw that he was physical. But uh, I didn't realize he was as physical as he is. You all right? Yeah. Let's do it again. Luckily, he's been doing Wing Chun for five years, so he's good. He's fast. He is really fast. As opposed to a sort of underhook. Sherlock Holmes studied something called Baritsu, and uh, we've tried to integrate that into a sort of street level. He is not just portraying that in the movie, he's walking the walk. That philosophy, that discipline, is something that he shares very much in common now with the character. He brings his full arsenal, and out comes something you've never seen before or never expected before. One more. <laughs> now, you know, it wouldn't be bad. Let him do one. How do you say one more? Freeze in French. Encore, s'il vous plaît. What's exciting about working with someone like Robert is that it becomes very much its own. Relax. I'm a doctor. The riskiest character in this whole story is Watson, because he's always been depicted as being a certain way. Watson is portrayed in the movies in the Basil Rathburn film with Nigel Bruce, who's kind of a kind of a heavy guy like me, who sits around and talks about things. A few people were surprised when I was cast as Watson, but when you go back to the original text, you realize that, in fact, this is a guy in his mid to late 30s. He has just left the army. He was uh, a bit of a war hero. Watson is a badass. 
a ladies' man, a man of action. I'll go, I'll go inside you know, that. Yeah. Well, Jude, I think, embodies exactly the idea they had for a modern Watson. Watson has been coined Hotson on this set because all the girls think he's hot. It's no mystery that gals like Jude, but that would be too easy. So he's almost withdrawing and playing someone who's just a little bit proper, but it's appropriate for the period. He's very much of alkaline to Robert's acid. You look longer at the top. Uh, it could just, or it could maybe that you could be. The second we met, we just started bouncing ideas off each other, and we were very much on the same page, which is a, a pretty eccentric page. Holmes, does your depravity know no bounds? No. It was clear that we wanted to create a chemistry that was both, you know, incredibly tight, but also there's that wonderful sort of humor where friends bicker. You're not making any sense. You're not human. And one of the big inspirations for Guy with this has been Butch Gaston, the Sundance Kid, and there's that quality. Now, I suppose I'm interested in the partnership between men and the humor and the irony and the quirks that go with it. What was that about saving bullets? They captured the levity and the humor, but at the same time, they captured the sincerity. We just managed to keep this relationship, and Robert and, and, and I have worked very, very hard on it, alive. And um, it's been nothing short of great fun. Dinner? Wonderful. Royale? My favorite. <laughs> you <laughs> It's too good, dude. It's too good. Bring it from the top. Still rolling. B camera. Action! It is kind of a, a bit of a love letter to Victorian London as well. London was always a character, obviously, because, I mean, Sherlock Holmes is synonymous with London. You have this incredibly fascinating, engaging, and dangerous city, and he knows every inch of it. After that, the carriage forked left and right, the telltale bump of the fleet conduit. The locations have been amazing. You know, I'm a Londoner born and bred, and we were going to places I'd never been or ne never seen. We had to be here to shoot locations, and, you know, we're running down real streets. The feeling of doing this picture in London is incredible. I mean, it is really a location movie. The work that we did out on the streets, you could not have done in the studio, not at that scale. Whether it's through incredible sets or CGI or whatever it is, we can really go back to London of 1891 and recreate it. They've built us docks, they've built us factories, they've built us boats. It's just fantastic to turn up and you know, make a, a big film. He's presenting it in the Guy Ritchie way, which is down and dirty and feels very authentic. I hope you get bail by breakfast, because the boys are getting hungry. Guy and London just go hand in hand, and I think it's exciting for him to be able to go back and say, well, what would it have looked like then? I was attracted to the project because we could reinvent an iconic English figure. What Guy brings is something that just weeds out all of that old-fashioned cliché from it. What excites me is that I feel that we have made a movie that's very specific to itself. I think we've been faithful, but I do think we've also injected it with life. Previous productions of Sherlock Holmes have obviously been shackled by one thing or another, but uh, we really are going for it.